This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2693. How do I get my spouse to go along with my frugal plans? By Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. How do I get my spouse to go along with my frugal plans? By Jacob Lund Fisker, of earlyretirementextreme.com. So you've joined the ranks of enlightened people who wanna retire early, move to another country, or redesign their lifestyle. And now you want your spouse or partner to go along with it. Not so fast. While winning friends is easy, influencing people is a lot harder, but it can be done. I'm a little dense when it comes to interpersonal understanding, but I still have learned a thing or two. The first and most important thing is that a person sounds a whole lot smarter and more intelligent when you agree with what the person is saying. If you don't believe me, try to tune in to an election debate. Candidates are very likely equally intelligent, but do they sound that way to you? Most people listen to other people mainly to confirm what they already know and be reaffirmed in their beliefs. This is not a very rational thing to do, but most people are like that probably due to humans being social animals. This means that if you suggest something which is radically different from what they already know, they'll think that you're ignorant and an outsider. If you keep pushing, they'll think you're stupid. A stupid person being an ignorant person who refuses to change his ways. Therefore, only make it known that you possess this information by talking about it once. Let them come to you when they're ready. Most people, and especially children, will follow your example rather than your suggestions if they follow at all. Children will follow practically any example and believe anything you tell them, so be careful there. But adults are calcified already and usually wanna follow their own example rather than your example unless it becomes massively clear that your way is better. In other words, you must be able to demonstrate a clear difference between your way and their way. This means you have to build up a visible difference to show that there's an alternative and build credibility. Once your spouse is ready, he or she will generally come around very quickly. For instance, you may build up a savings account or what people with bills, job dependents, and other liabilities call an emergency fund. If your spouse is already familiar with the concept, start talking about how your emergency fund will support you for five years and that you're thinking about switching careers or taking a long hiatus. A five-year fund is simply in another category altogether. It's quantitatively different because it gives you many more opportunities. A normal six-month fund is only designed to pay your bills while you go and look for another job because you just got fired or carry you over a while on an extended sick leave. Those who focus solely on those problems will have a hard time wrapping their head around the larger time frame and the additional possibilities. However, if your spouse's emergency fund is only the standard six months, but she's beginning to think that her current life path sucks, she'll most likely start saving more so that she'll have the same options as you. If your accounts are joint, say you'd prefer to save the money whenever she proposes an expense. Just suggest that you split some money into his and hers. And if she wants to buy something, fine, but you reserve the same amount of money for savings. After a while, you can start talking about the interest you're earning. One thing that tends to get people going is when I talk about how the money my savings generate on average correspond to a full-time job in Walmart and how that essentially means that the person is working for me. I can put this in really snarky terms too, using terms like mortgage and credit, and it seems to get people thinking. If you want your spouse to adopt some change, another thing to try is to find something they're familiar with. For instance, DW could not see herself living in a tumbleweed house, my original plan. So I started talking about boats. Then someone suggested RVs. Now, unlike me, DW had actually been in an RV and lived in a mobile home park at some point. So she was familiar with those and was much less resistant to this idea. Had she not been, I guess one way would have been to start camping and make the trips longer and longer, after which I would combine this with a suggestion that if we started camping full time, we could cut our budget in half. In summary, the sneaky way to go about things if you wanna persuade someone is to change your environment to make your ideas seem more sensical, such as try acquiring a majority of your stuff through swapping or free cycling. 
This might make your spouse reconsider the idea of paying for things, especially when he or she sees the envelopes arriving by mail, or you pick up a leather jacket while you proudly announce that you did not pay for this. By the way, guys, I have not bought anything for me personally for several months now, but I've bartered more than 10 things away, probably closer to 20. Get furniture used and make this the normal way for you. Mention that this month, your expenses were completely covered by income from your investment accounts. Cook meals that only cost a dollar, but taste the same as $10 meals. Later, you can start talking about how you don't need to work anymore because you have enough savings to retire. None of this guarantees success, but maybe, just maybe, someday your spouse will have a problem that is best solved with one of your solutions, and then you'll be right there. You just listened to the post titled, How Do I Get My Spouse to Go Along with My Frugal Plans? by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Have you been using Mint to manage your finances? First, the bad news. Mint is shutting down. And now, the good news. There's a better alternative. Our sponsor, Monarch Money. Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and loving it. Maybe you're saving for a down payment, a wedding, a dream vacation, your kid's college. I've found that Monarch makes it easy to help you reach your financial goals, whatever they are. I definitely wouldn't be able to allocate my finances or plan as clearly without help from Monarch. In fact, Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all of your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com OFD. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash OFD. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash OFD for your extended 30-day free trial. While it has a negative connotation, it may conjure up an image of a miserable penny pincher. I think self-imposed frugality has a different flavor to it. When you're forced to be frugal because you've maxed out your credit cards and simply don't have the funds to make ends meet, I can see how that would feel like deprivation. But I think when you willingly experiment with frugality and use it as a way to test your assumptions about what you need and don't need, it can be a very freeing experience. The key here is choice. Experiment with frugality on your own terms. And you're more likely to not find yourself in a position where it's forced on you. I also think reframing the concept can change your relationship to it. So rather than thinking of myself as frugal, I like to think of myself as resourceful. Navigating this mindset shift around frugality and saving money with a partner can be a really bonding experience. It forces you to have deep discussions around what you value and what you deem important. But that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.